Good morning and welcome to this beautiful day. My name is Carrie. I'm Janine. And we are the Idea Ladies from the Passionate Home in Langley. Good morning. Candace is here behind the camera. Uh, we are live here to inspire and help you create a beautiful life and to your, answer your questions, of course. Mm -hmm. And today we are going to demo how to use Annie Sloan chalk paint on tile and brick. Yeah. Does that sound good? Yeah. Nanny Marks is on. Pauline. Oh, hey. good morning. <laughs> good morning I don't think she ever misses. She's like our number one fan. <laughs> she says good morning. Good morning. Wonderful. Good morning, Cynthia. So if you have any questions, please type them in, and, and uh, Candice will read them to us. And if you're watching this later on on our newsletter or on YouTube, you can still type it in. Mm -hmm. And we're always here also from Tuesday to Saturday to answer any questions because we really want to make sure that you are set up for success for your project, especially one as important as painting your tile, which is, could be yeah. your backsplash or your floor or the tile around your fireplace, fireplace yeah. because this is all possible. So should we get started? Let's get started. All right. Okay. First, I wanted to show you some photos to just get you inspired. So um, here is a before and after. Like, wow, look at this. So we were looking at this photo and really analyzing what to do. So I think the best way to get started is just start by painting your grout if you're going to do that with a brush and then you could roller the whole thing. So they have a, like a ceramic tile, maybe a 12 by 12 yeah. right, with grout lines. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here's another quick little one in a bathroom. Look at the difference that made, right? That's Just shocking, a, hey? like a beautiful update. Mm -hmm. um, this one I really wanted to show because they're not really particularly worried about the size of their tile. So if you zoom into here, you can actually see their old grout lines and the tile size, but they're making it look like a subway I'm pattern. Just gonna come right in close on this. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Can you see these? Those lines. The lines mm -hmm. that were the old grout lines. Right. So pretty. This is stunning. I like yeah. how they've done the um, shower curtain as well. It's like the brick coming <laughs> all the way up. Okay, let's find a kitchen. Oh, actually, here, look at this is a um, fireplace surround. So that can really make a huge difference as well. Oh, this went oh, from got, like the 80s oh, is that the better? Yeah. to today. Right? Yeah. Um, Oh, a foyer, oh, right? That makes a huge beautiful. impact on yeah. your foyer. There's another fireplace. <gasps> wow. Look at the tile goes all the way to the ceiling. I love that. That's stunning. That. We have that We have that, we have that stencil. stencil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Natalie used this um, in, her in her bathroom. Oh, in her bathroom. She actually said yeah. that she loves it. Her bathroom was holding right? up really well. So pretty. Yeah. Kitchen. Look how bright that is. I wonder what Looks color like that was camper. before. Yeah. It does. Well, Actually, again, it does. you can see the grout lines here. Yeah. So and they have, in. they're not too concerned about the size of their um, tile, like right. you were saying. They've mm -hmm. just chosen a design that they loved. So I just wanted to show you some projects that we have done here at the shop, too. So Tina, one of our newer staff members, this was her floor before. And then, look at, she painted it country gray chalk paint. Um, and then, here it is all styled <laughs> styled and done it just Beautiful. like so pretty yeah really clean yeah. Um, good morning to sandra debbie chris campbell good morning everyone i think lots of people are going to be interested in right? what we're going to cover today yeah yeah so this is a brick before so you don't actually have to cover all the brick either here i am painting so i'm just <laughs> getting in on the grout line um, with a more detailed brush and then i actually like just whitewashed the brick a little bit right so that in the end, it's just a little bit softer. Beautiful. If you wanted to paint the brick solid, this is in my daughter's room currently. So her fireplace was not the prettiest brick, right? So there it goes. That's how I started. Just start in a corner and get going. That was after, and here it is, all styled. Wow. So wow. I love how it's love. styled with a can of. And <laughs> <laughs> right? There it yeah. is again. Just stays there. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So, you know, if you've been following us for a while or you know about Annie Sloan chalk paint, it sticks to almost any surface without sanding and priming. Mm -hmm. And one of the common questions we get is, um, well, I, I would think when they walk in and they see that we've painted the concrete. The concrete. And they're like, what? Um, but painting tile gets that same response. Totally. So even though we're going to cover how you can paint a tile floor, this paint also works on linoleum. Hardwood, um, yeah. concrete. I actually anything. found, um, Annie has these uh, colorist magazines. If you haven't seen them, we have them here at the store and they're filled with inspiration. And I found here was uh, Lino. Can you see this, Candace? Really was my finger in the yeah. way? I can't see what I'm pointing at. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so even though we're not painting lino today, that is a option, but you can see how incredible that kitchen looks right? in yeah, the beautiful. end. So yeah. pretty. And the other one I found was in an, another issue of her bookazine, uh, The Colorist, and this is tile. This, is, this was all over the internet yeah. when she first did it. Now, so Candace, this is the before. Can you see it? Yeah. And then the after. Stunning. Well, Amazing. this might be a better picture because yeah. you can see it better. But this entire kitchen is a chalk paint makeover. The cabinets mm -hmm. and everything. Fabulous. Yeah. So today we're going to demo and just show you how easy it is um, to paint your tile. Yeah. You guys Good ready? Morning. Good morning, Cheryl. If anybody there has done it before, please share. Also, yeah, share what did. didn't work, or what you learned, so that we can all. Sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, this says it looks so much better, right? Yeah. What yeah. A, what an amazing upgrade. <laughs> All right. So this is just a piece of tile. It's actually quite lovely the way it is. Yeah, right? it's a really pretty tile. Yeah. It has a little bit of a linen texture to it. So what would be the first thing you would do, Janine, if this was on your floor? Clean it extremely well. Yeah. Right? Get in there. I, I painted my kitchen floor one time and it was pretty dirty. It was really old. And then just yeah. clean the tile really, really well. So yeah. what would you clean it with? That's going to be the next <laughs> question you guys are going to ask us, I'm yeah. sure. Um, you can use a TSP, but you're definitely going to want to rinse that really well after just with lots of water. Mm -hmm. um, I did sand, try to sand it a little bit. I mean, you're not really like taking your sand or getting down there or anything, mm -hmm. but just kind of scuff it up, see if it gives it some tooth, especially this tile, because you're not usually painting brand new tile. Right? This is brand new tile, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, you can use a crud cutter. Right? Yeah. But everything just needs to be rinsed really well and dry, like 100% dry later. Exactly. Um, I'm just thinking too about a customer of ours, Teresa, who did a backsplash. Yeah. Now, the, uh, in the kitchen, this tile is very flat and mm -hmm. the one she was painting had a lot of texture to it. It oh, almost looked yeah. like tumbled stone. Mm. And she just did a wash of it to take the pink hue away and that it was as simple as that. Oh, just a and, wash. Yeah. yeah, and just distressed the, the, the high points just just a little bit. Um, so whether your uh, tile is flat like this or has texture, the chalk paint will work for you. Okay. Yep. So Evelyn and Susan. Good, good morning. morning. Um, a couple of tools you will need when you're painting tile or brick is um, a good brush and a good roller. So I have Annie's um, flat brush here and also Annie's roller. It's a sponge roller. And we su suggest, or she suggests, that you feather in around the edges. This also would be good to do your grout lines, right? Mm. And then we kind of talked about when Janine prepped <laughs> tile yesterday, and you used a brush to brush on all the paint. I did. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I would have used a roller. What works best for you? Um, and for me, I would have used the roller for the first one and probably the roller of the second one but then depending on the look you want yeah i would have maybe feathered through the second coat give some so texture it's just much faster mm -hmm. so i'm going to show you so let's pretend i've cleaned this no i haven't so let's just see what happens here oh, pauline has a yes. really good question yeah um would it be okay to do on a heated bathroom floor tile yeah. So you're not oh, using yeah, the wax, it's right? The, it's the yeah. It is yeah. a two-step process. So you're going to paint and, and lacquer. lacquer it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you know, I stayed at. Um, I went to um, Tofino uh -huh. last week, and we rented this beach house that had heated floors, and oh. I've never had that before. And I'm like, oh, it's the so best nice. thing I invented. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, so basically, I've just, I'm not gooping it on and I'm not going to squish it on. I'm just, I've m moved it up here. This is um, Annie Sloan's um, Amsterdam. Yeah, Amsterdam Green. Thank you, people. So and look at how the coverage of just one coat, right? If you want a closer look at the greens, this week's um, coming oh, out on newsletter. Tuesday, yeah. the newsletter is Fifty Shades of Green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I won. <laughs> but, just look how this is just one coat yeah right right now i would do two coats even though the one coat is uh looking fabulous i think so for sure so this is what it looks like with a roller but let's say we took a brush and i'm just can you see the difference at all with this yeah yeah, yeah um and i would probably myself do this for the second coat so that i have this 
uh, kind of linen-y look without the roller bubble marks. Does right. That, so I don't that orange peely kind of look. Yeah. yeah. It, it gives it more texture, right? Mm -hmm. It looks more natural, and I yeah. just prefer that. So, as you know, the chalk paint will dry in regular room temperatures in about 20 minutes, and I could go ahead and do my second coat, but then I would wait overnight before I lacquered. Yeah. Would you? I totally you would. You yeah. just want it really secured on there. You don't. The longer you leave it, the harder the paint is going to get. So. A little mm -hmm. and also piece of something in the there. Grout might stay a little. Bit yeah, it might stay. Wetter. It's a cool area, right? Like the yeah. tiles are not warm to the touch usually. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you want to pick a color. And we're here to help you with that. And then you want to have the proper tools to get going. Uh, clean it mm -hmm. and give it a first coat of paint with either the roller or the brush. Yeah. Okay? All right. Take it away, Jimmy. All right. So next, you're going to pick a stencil, I think, right? So, well, I mean, you probably have done this before you started painting. If you wanted to stencil it. <laughs> if you want to. You don't have to. Yeah. No. I've done some floors. Just leave it. Well, it's you could beautiful. show the, the first half of this one. It okay. doesn't have anything. Right? So on here, I've got two tiles prepared. So this one I did in the graphite, and this one I did Paris Gray. So I'm just going to show the different... I just wanted to give you a quick view of some of the stencils we have. So there's different sizes for sure, right? So you can get a little idea. Says, Good morning, ladies. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And this is similar to the one we have on our floor when you first come in, but it's um, a little bit different. And then there's big, huge ones, too. Uh, I just have to these what if you didn't have a stencil and you didn't want one? You could do something with painter's tape. You could definitely tape out a pattern, right? Yeah. You it could would maybe take yeah. longer. Or you could do your grout a different color, right? You so could. if you did your yeah. grout like dark gray and you did your tile in white or something, that would be really pretty. So I just wanted to show quickly as what is, how you would stencil this. So on this one, I used a different stencil. So go. I started with this stencil. It's a little bit tribal kind of different mm -hmm. look. Boho, tribal. Boho. Yeah. 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 Right? Can, do you want her to hold it up? Is that better? So this one I no? didn't necessarily okay. fill in completely solid, right? Like I'm letting it kind of just be soft and fade in and out a little bit. Now you could sand this if you, you could. wanted to give it a It'd more... Be really like mm -hmm. soft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just, I'm going to line this up maybe with the corner. So this originally was the same color I started with up here. And then yeah. did you already say what color you did Yeah, here? Okay. graphite. I wasn't listening because I was concentrating what? on my green over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I put a little bit of paint in a tray here. I'm getting it on my roller, but then I'm actually getting a lot off of my roller mm -hmm. because I don't want it to squish under my stencil. Um, I'm going to hold this really solidly and then I'm... So you could tape it in place if yeah, you're you one could. of those people. <laughs> one of those. Probably <laughs> on a floor, I think I might. Or right? even a bit of that low-tack glue. So I'm Spray just on. yeah you could going yeah. from all different angles. Um, this stencil has been well used. A little bit harder. It's to very get. thick to stencil the entire roof of our little vintage trailer. So cute. So it took a long time. That's why that. But these stencils um, that goes to show how great the stencils mm, are. How, right. Yeah. Now Janine's using a roller. We also sell a stencil brush. Yeah. And you may be going, well, why is she using a roller? And the roller is great when you're doing the whole pattern in one color. But if we were going to do two or three colors, which is an option, you may want to use the stencil brush because it's smaller and it'll allow you to do maybe just the flower parts in a pale pink right? or whatever. Right, wouldn't that be pretty? It would be pretty, yeah. Okay, but so this is the quickest way. This is really fast, and I can tell right now that I'm not really in the edges of my stencil, but I just wanted to give you a quick view of what this might look like. Ah, oh, yeah, see, a little bit of splatter. Okay, so oh. let's say you didn't want that. Yeah. What are you going to do? So you could very gently use a wet rag and get in there, right? You could would use you? a detail brush and just go back in with your. Yeah. You know graphite. what I would do? What would you do? I'd let it dry and then I'd just sand it. Just sand it. I because know. I just want, I'd give it that wear. I love that old European so tile look. Looks like hand painted, right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah. It never has to be perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's one way to do this. The which is stamps, transfers, all that kind of stuff. So this is their barnwood stamp and we just kind of, you can lay out. There's, it comes with a few different planks. I think four planks and then some. Yeah. Like. I didn't actually I didn't grab the package I should have um, but so I cut these apart so you oh can you kind cut of, those yeah so I left them oh. on the hard plastic it comes on it's a right. little bit easier to mm -hmm. play with oh. if you're gonna do a flat surface I mean even a round surface like look how much that bends 
It's just, I think it's easier. I don't know why you pull did them off. Did you cut yours, uh, Candace, when I you did, did your bathroom? Yeah, it was yeah. Really easier. We have a question. She okay. says, I want to paint and stencil my outdoor cement pad by the back door. It tends to go green over the winter. Mm. So oh. So my hubby pressure washes it yeah. in the spring. What if it goes green for moss after it's paint? Can he pressure wash? Yes. Yes, so that's concrete, right? And the concrete just absorbs that paint in and you don't even necessarily need to to lacquer it, right? right? Mm -hmm. I would just let yeah. it go. And then if you if he's power washed like, and for some reason it started, I would not concentrating on it being perfect. You can always repaint it. Right. But I think you're gonna be fine because it's just absorbed in there. I did my wooden outdoor gazebo and I pressure washed it that summer. Like, yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. I forgot and I pressure washed it. I'm like, what? <laughs> and it looked so great. It's good. Oh. Yeah. So it comes with these little details too. So I don't know if you saw me. I laid this my stamp side up and I'm doing the stamp in reverse than you would think, right? So, so now I'm you're doing using like that. Ink. Now not I'm using ink, ink, not chalk paint. Okay. It just gives a little bit of a crisper line, but you can also use um, chalk paint as well. So this is apparently the detail finish. Ah! Okay. <laughs> You're putting the nail pops in. It's the nail pops. It's the kind of in between the wood there. You can see it moving around. Boop. Oh, so, look at how limits. subtle. Right? It's yeah. just really subtle. That's, oh, that's amazing. Another fun one are these knots. So let's try that. This is a good idea for a floor, I think, if you want to have that wood right? look. Mm -hmm. you know, lots of people have second homes or cabins or, you know, they're renovating an older home. This is great options for you. So I'm just going to press it down. I it put kind of half cool. on yeah, there. Yeah, super cool. Yeah. Right? Okay, let's see. Boop. Look at that. How it's fun. Kinda, it just makes it come to life. Right? Yeah. Wow. I'm going to add another one. Oh! She's going crazy. Super exciting. I'm shaking away. <laughs> so fun. Oh, this is great. You just yelled into it. Um, <laughs> do you need to see a whole one? So I would just continue, right? So I'm kind of... You, you could do random pattern, you could, just don't line up all your mm -hmm. edges, right? So you mm -hmm. could do something like that and just keep going. Yeah. So you could do a pattern with an iron orchid stamp with either their ink yeah. or, or chalk, chalk paint. paint. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just gonna keep going, why not? You're gonna keep going? Yeah. Now there is another stamp that looks like a tile. Yeah. Do we have that? No. No, we couldn't find it. <laughs> oh, do we have it in stock? <laughs> oh, yeah, sold we out. Do. Yeah, we, we do. We oh, grab I'm going to go get it because okay. you should really see it. I want you to see uh, it. I'm not be sure right that back. I went over far enough. Okay. Well, and our friend Shelly did her laundry room with it. So yeah. It amazing. It's so pretty. All right. Mike says someone is addicted to the fun. Yes, Janine. It's yeah. crazy. Okay, so I'm just kind of lining this up as best I can, hanging it over. You can use the back of your stamp pad to just kind of evenly distribute. Oops. You know what I love about this too is that if you don't um, load it fully, yeah, um, it, it doesn't matter. You can still bring in right. all the little detail things, and you don't see it in the overall thing. Oh, sorry, my fingers over the camera. Oh. <laughs> So super Teresa fun. Says I need that. I know it is so cool. It's Teresa. so cool. You can use this in so many places. Candace did this. Did you say in your I, bathroom I, I, behind I your? I did behind my toilet wall. Right. Yeah. Okay. We don't forget. We want to. We only have twenty minutes. We okay. want to show. Sorry, I know guys. This is genius. This is so fun. fun. <laughs> but I wanted to show you this stamp. Yeah. Because this works the same way as the barn wood, but it gives you this very popular in the photos that you showed us that look. Right. And of course, Annie has. 40 some odd colors, they can all be mixed to make colors, so you're never limited. So whatever you can dream up, we could probably help you do. For sure. So um, clean, paint, you could choose to do a stencil, or you could choose to do a stamp, or you could choose just to leave it, right? Yeah. Okay, so now let's say you love it. What is the next step? Uh, are you putting wax on this? We, have a, we have a question yeah. oh, yeah. though. Um, okay, so Janet's asking, do we have any of the backsplash before and afters? We could definitely put it in. Yes. In the comments later. Yeah. And then um, okay. she also says, how does the backsplash hold up behind a stove? So here comes the most important thing after you paint it. Yeah. And good morning from Royce. Good morning. Good morning. Um, behind the stove, I, I they haven't had any problems. I haven't heard anything. 
Um, it's got a lacquer, which is totally washable. Yes. So, you know, unless you've got flames going, I, I don't think <laughs> yeah. we're going to have any issues. Yeah, it's just lacquer, lacquer, lacquer. Lacquer, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I did any backsplash. I was going to say, did you do any? Okay, so we will post uh, that particular Jesus. house she did for um, a stage, I think, um, so that you can see it. Yeah. Okay, so um, Annie has a lacquer. And that is what we would definitely suggest that you put on the tile when you are done, right? Mm -hmm. um, and especially on the floor. She recommends two to three coats on a busy surface. And she also recommends that you apply it with a roller uh, or you can brush around or the edges. Yeah. Um, now I did some homework last night and I was reading many um, people's projects of how they did theirs. And some people rolled it and then again feathered with the Annie's brush on top. And they loved the the two, the two look. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get down there with the light, light reflects differently. Mm -hmm. Annie has two lacquers, a gloss and a matte. And so we want to talk to you about which one you should choose depending on the color of paint that you choose. Yeah. Right? Um, so, but let's talk about when you're ready. We're here to help you. But let's talk about application so people can see it. Perfect. Um, do you want to do the painted tile? Should we paint? Yeah, well, let's just do it. So while they're prepping up there, yeah. um, Jen asked, how many coats of lacquer would you recommend behind a stove? I would say three. Yeah, I think three. Um, and Cheryl, safe. good morning again. On the floor, what is easier? What goes faster, stencil or stamp? Meh. Half a dozen, half uh, a yeah, dozen. I think yeah. it's going to be about the same, really. They're both, you know, you just got to be... Um, so one, kind of, you, you're kind yeah. of doing the stamp yeah. and turning it over and the other one, like when I, I stenciled yeah. the floor here and it was really quick because I just quickly rolled over it and I didn't really want perfect edges and moved it to the mm -hmm. next one. And I cleaned the, the stencil every couple of times I did it so that yeah. it didn't have a buildup. Yeah. Well, and says yeah. she loves that batik stencil. Yeah. It's so tribal. It's so beautiful. <laughs> so pretty. So you kind of have to move from like kitty corner or whatever you call it, right? Be like skip a tile because you don't want to put your... Yes. Uh, stencil over top of a wet painted tile. Yeah. So just come back and move around a little bit, right? Yeah. But if you were using the stamp, you could butt up against yeah, the next the one. Yeah. So there's something quick. to think about. That is true. Yeah. The other thing too is that you don't have to do it. Like if you have a really big space, it doesn't have to be done in a day. You can walk yeah. away and finish it up the you next what? time. I'm a, you know what? I'm. Should we just brush it on so I don't have to pour it sure. out? Sure. Yeah. So with the lacquer, stir. The good stuff stir. is at the bottom. Stir. 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 And as always, with her paint and all her products, do not leave this in the garage to freeze, okay? So, a good quality, clean brush. Why are you smiling at Because I was going to say yes, Mom. Yes. <laughs> are you listening, people? I want you to be successful here. Um, actually, your scent, well, I'll just do it. Just do it. I mean, it's really yeah. that easy. Um, so, let's say you had a lot of, um, like the tile had a lot of, Mm, texture, te texture and stuff. And stuff. Yes. The brush is great because you, you're getting in yeah, you're all getting that. In mm -hmm. Yeah. The other thing Annie says is don't, once it's started to dry, you don't want to over, keep going over it all the no. time, right? And you want to apply it as e evenly as possible. And if you think, oh gosh, I missed a section. Well, you're going to do it twice anyways for sure. Yeah. So you can see it's kind of white, or you may or not be able to, but we can see it here that it's kind of white. A little like cloudy-ish. Cloudy. Oops, sorry. This is going to dry clear. Yeah. Beautiful. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very therapeutic. Yeah. Um, so any questions? Do, what have I missed? I, I don't know if you said the lacquer comes in a matte or a, a gloss, gloss finish. Yes. So yeah, if you're gonna do a dark color, mm -hmm. then you should do the gloss first and then the matte on top if you're wanting that look, just because it can go a little bit cloudy, right? Mm -hmm. The matte, so you wanna definitely do the gloss on first dark. and that stops it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clean up. Um, chalk paint, soap and water. Soap and water. Lacquer, soap and water people. <laughs> it's all water based. It's all earth friendly. Yeah. Really good, it's, it's it gives you immediate gratification. It's going to give you a brand new bathroom or backsplash or around your fireplace. Mm -hmm. um, we have everything here that you need, I think. Yeah. So bring your ideas. If you, if you don't have any, we're full of them. Um, and it. yeah. No and on yellowing, right? Yeah. That's a big thing. For mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. That's why you don't want to goop it on either, right? And True. some people go, oh, I already have a lacquer at home. And I'm like, well, 
If you're using, I, we can never guarantee how that will build up on the chalk paint, right. especially with whites. If you if you do a yellow, I mean a, a lacquer from somewhere else and it yellows, I would feel horrible. Yeah. But you are always free to do it if that's what you, if you have a product that you love, right? right. Totally. Any other last questions on? Well, we didn't paint brick. I'm hiding it. Oh, what? Sorry. <laughs> Okay. okay, that's what I, I'm like, what did I have this brush for? That was it. Here. Here, I'll move okay. this over here. I'll put this on here. This is a brick. So, do you want it? Pauline, good question. Is it fiddly to do around the toilet bowl? Uh, to paint? I mean, yeah. Well, are you stenciling? <laughs> stand. Okay, so uh, had a, uh, I read about it last night. They did the whole space except for any half pieces when they were stenciling, and then they cut the stencil. Yeah. And she said, well, in the bathroom, it would be hard to have two people. I don't know why she used two people, but mm. she cut the stencil so it was easier to manage. And yeah. then when it gets right in there, you can use a fine paintbrush. Annie has the detail brushes just to finish off your, your um, uh, details. Right. But really, if anyone's looking too closely into their toilet. Mm. <laughs> and I know that when Natalie did the, was it the stencil? No, it was the stencil. She also cut it. Cut it. Ended mm -hmm. up cutting a piece, so that's good. So we may be Look running out of time here. I'm not sure, but we want to also show you that painting brick is an option. You saw Janine's beautiful fireplace that she did. Yeah. So you could just whitewash it a little mm -hmm. bit, right? You could take a wet cloth and wipe some of this off, and then you can also just get in there, and you're going to more pounce it, right? And get into all those little nooks For and solid. crannies, yeah. and yeah, you if you wanted a more bit. solid look. So. I found that I didn't really want to use my beautiful brush because this is very textured and I don't want it to eat down my bristles. I mean, depending on how big your area is, right? Like I did my huge rock Teresa fireplace thing. and it was... Uh, okay, Teresa says, keep going, this is awesome. <laughs> okay. It was a little bit, you know, hard on my brush. But this one actually is really good. Look how beautiful. That's what incredible. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For those so outdated fireplaces with the brick and stone and people are like, oh. Yeah. So Would you do, like if you had some <laughs> kind of icky tile just at your front door outside, you could oh, paint yeah, it. Oh, yeah, outside. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. this works like. In a, the summer. And in the summer, yeah. yeah. And the lacquer it's gotta be dry. indoor or outdoor, right? Like yeah. you, if you're doing all your furniture outside, you can use the lacquer on that after too. Now, Christina from the Reclaimed Heirloom has recently moved to Victoria and she did a YouTube mm. video on how she oh, updated yeah. her original tile around this beautiful fireplace. Mm -hmm. And what she did is she made a wash of chalk paint. So she used, I think it was the old white and water. That's how you make a wash. Yeah. And she applied it with just um, a rag because all she wanted to do was change the color slightly from beige to white. And right. I was just thinking that... So mm -hmm. pretty. Here, I wanna add water to your... Okay. Ooh, that's not a misting at the moment. But, <laughs> but we haven't planned this, but let's just do this for a sec. I wanna, that's it's a kind little. of a wash? Yeah. Um, and I have a little paper towel. Okay. Let's do it on like, let's just see. Oh, let's scrape just in our tile. Scrape your tile. Okay. Can you put it here and just see? Or she put she put it on with this. Okay. Oh, but it was way more. Yeah, like I don't think we have enough product right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. And you, you, oh yeah, see how it's just really, really faint. That's all she needed though to take right? the a bit huge, of a damp cloth. Yeah, and not a paper towel, obviously. That's, this was kind of oh, it's see how it's just absorbed right in there. Yeah. But hers was a, a tile, yeah. not brick. Yeah. Okay. And that's kind of what I did with the one that I was showing you. Um, you know, I just whitewashed it and painted the grout. So you can see I had rags, wet rags, and I was just wiping the paint on and oh, off. Oh, right, 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 yeah. right. So you can go back and have a look at that one if you want to see that look as well. Yeah. FYI, the silicone doesn't hold the paint. Um, silicone. Actually, some of it does. So there's paintable silicone, right? So that paintable silicone, you can, the just, chalk paint sticks no problem. The silicone? Mm -hmm. Like if you were in a bathroom, you know, around your oh, tub. Oh, yeah. most of it stuff. is paintable. Yeah, most yeah. of it is paintable. Yeah. So you just got to see. The other be just do it in a white if you were doing yeah. it. So we hope that this has given you a you know a quick 20 minute tutorial <laughs> on how to very quick. very quick do tile and brick. Um, next week, what are we gonna do? 
We're going to talk about finishes because a lot of you came in after our restoration hardware um, demo. Yes. And thank you for watching, yeah, guys. Yeah, thank you yes. so much. Um, and we didn't really cover waxing and people had a lot of questions. So we're going to talk about all kinds of different finishes. So we're going to dive deeper into the lacquer and the wax yeah. and whatever. The top coats, the top what coats. to do. Mm -hmm. um, so huge people watched our last week's yeah, video. We are here you. every Friday at 930. And that restoration hardware, look, if you, if you didn't watch it, you can go back and see it on TPH TV on our website. Uh, or just click through on Instagram yeah. um, or scroll down on Facebook. <laughs> um, and yeah, top coat, surprising. Sometimes we just think, oh, people know. Right? Mm -hmm. um, they so wanted to I'm, see us wax. Mm -hmm. We're going to do some people are loving you. No, waxing. No, no, keep going. Thank you very much. This is it's so helpful. Oh, yeah, good. Well, really this gives good. you a tip uh, yeah. uh, of what's possible. And it's all possible, guys. Yeah. And, sure. and, um, and we don't just send you away and go, hmm, good luck, right? Uh, we're, we're there every step of the way. And if something's not working, like we did have some trials yesterday and we're like, well, why didn't that work? Ah, we need to clean better. Yeah, you know? that's true. So it's not, nothing is a total fail as I've learned before. It's all a learning <laughs> process, uh, but you can do it and we are here for you. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're here, we're here all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you are in the area and you want to come and see and touch these, um, we're going to have them here for you. So we look forward to seeing you soon and tune in again next Friday. See you then. Bye. 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 <laughs>